Deep agents are agents that can act over longer time horizons by using planning tools and file systems and spawning subagents. And you can pass them arbitrary tools for them to take action on. That introduces a problem. What do you do if some of these tools are sensitive and you want to have a human in the loop approval step before they get acted on? We just added the ability to approve, reject, and respond to tool calls in Deep Agents in a human in the loop manner. And in this video, I want to walk through that. In the README, we now have these docs on human in the loop support. You can see that the way that we specify the human in the loop support is to pass an interrupt config when creating the Deep Agent. The interrupt config is a mapping of the tool name to the human in the loop interaction patterns that you want to enable. There are a few different ones that you can enable. The three right now are allow accept, allow edit, and allow respond. Allow accept adds an interrupt and allows the human user to accept that tool call and it will just continue from there. Allow edit allows the human user to edit the tool call and maybe even the tool name that has been called and then continue with those edited arguments. And allow respond instead responds to the tool call and places the user's response in the tool message. So it doesn't actually execute any tool call. It rather mocks that out with the response and then sends that back to the model. You can also just specify true, and this will turn all three of these actions on by default. Let's now see how to use it in a notebook. So I've got my notebook here with the most recent version of Deep Agents, and I'm going to import create Deep Agent and then this Langchain core tools object. I'm going to mock out this tool that, if it was real, would be a sensitive tool, send email. I might want to add some human in the loop to approve any emails that are sent. The two arguments to this will be the content of the email and the recipient, a string. I'm now going to create my human in the loop config. And I'm going to have send email. This is the name of the tool. And I'm going to set that equal to true. So I'm going to be able to do all three of accept, edit, and respond. I'm going to create a really simple deep agent. So create deep agent with the send email tool with the instructions here and then this human in the loop config. And now I'm going to set up the checkpointer. So the checkpointer is necessary because in order for human in the loop support to happen, there needs to be this checkpointer which will save the state of the agent at that point in time, at the point in time in which the interrupt occurs, and basically wait there indefinitely for the user to send in another signal, whether that's the accept or edit or response. This statefulness provided by the checkpointer is key for human in the loop settings. Langgraph has really good checkpointing and persistence layer, and it enables this human in the loop settings in a production ready way. And that's one of the main benefits of using Langgraph. So I'm going to create this checkpointer, and I'm going to set agent.checkpointer to start using it. The other thing that I'm going to need to do now is when I invoke this deep agent, I'm going to need to pass in this config. This config is going to have the thread ID in the configurable fields. And so I can set this thread ID to be whatever I want, but I'll use distinct ones for different conversations so that it remembers which one is which. And the message that I'm going to use in a bunch of these examples is this one, tell jim at gmail.com I'll be late. So this is a really simple message that I'm going to use to show off first the accept flow, then the edit flow, and lastly, the response flow. All right, awesome. Let's start by looking at the accept flow. Here, I'm going to use this thread ID of one dash accept just to keep it unique. And I'm going to stream the response of the agent as it goes through the nodes over this message that I'm passing in. And so I can see that the first message that will be streamed back is from the agent node. It has this AI message and it has this tool call. Then we see that this interrupt occurs. So this interrupt now has this action request and it wants to send email with these arguments to jim at gmail.com with the following content. To continue from here, I can use the command object. The command object is useful if I want to do something more complicated than just add on to the thread. And in this case, I want to pass back some response to the human interrupt. So I'm passing back this command object. I'm going to pass back this resume keyword argument and I'm going to pass in a list of objects. Why am I passing in a list? So this interrupt, if you notice, the value is a list itself. So you can actually interrupt multiple times. That's actually disabled for deep agents, but in Langgraph in general, you can interact multiple times. And so that's why it's a list. The one argument I'm going to pass in is just this dictionary, and it's going to be type equals accept. There's no other arguments needed because the accept is so simple. If we resume from there, we can see that it goes through this post model hook. That's where the interrupt is happening. 
It then prints out the email, and I have this in my tool. I have this in the mock tool to print out the email so I can see exactly what's happening. And then it goes into the tool node, or it gets the response from the tool node. That's what's just executed. It goes back to the agent. The agent then sends this final message, email sent. I've notified jim at gmail.com. And then it runs through the post model hook. There's now no interrupts in the post model hook, and so it finishes. And so that's the really simple accept flow. Let's now take a look at the edit flow. So here I'm using a different thread ID. So it's going to do a, a different conversation, but it's going to be the same message. And so we can see that up to here, it should look pretty similar. So I get the agent response. It's going to send an email to Jim, and I can see the interrupt here. Let's now go on to the edit action. So in here, I'm going to be using a different thread ID. So it's going to be taking the place of a different conversation. But I'm going to send the exact same message in as before. And so the first few steps should look pretty similar. I'm going to have this response from the agent node where I see these messages. The, the LLM is generating this AI message. I'll send an email to jim at gmail.com. And then I see this interrupt. Great. So now here's where things are going to change. So I'm still going to use command. I'm still going to use resume. But now the type is going to be edit. And I'm going to pass in another thing, args. What's in args? So args is now a dictionary representing what the tool to execute instead should be. So I can see it has an action name, and this will be send email because this is the name of the tool that I have. And then the args here will be the arguments to that tool. And so I am now overwriting this with content field, I'll be late. So this is now going to be the new input to the email. Previously, you can see that the content was, hi, Jim. I wanted to let you know that I'll be running late today. So now it's just a simple thing. Recipient is going to be this. Great. So now let's resume here. We can see that we have this post model hook. This is basically just running and saying that we updated things. We can now see that we print out the email that we sent. And now it's just this really simple, I'll be late. So this affected the tool before it happened. And now it's executing on these new edited arguments. We can then see that the tool node runs. We can then see that the, the agent generates another response. Done. I've sent an email to jim at gmail.com, letting him know that you'll be late. And then the post model hook runs again, and that's finished. So this is the editing flow. Let's now see the response flow. So again, I'm switching up the thread ID. Everything else is the same. This initial stuff should be pretty similar. I'm going to have a response from the agent node saying that it's it's drafted this tool call. It's tool calling the send email tool with these arguments. And now here's where things are going to be different again. So now the type is different. It's response. And the arguments, they exist, but they're just a string. And so this string is going to be used as the tool call message instead of actually running the tool. So just to repeat that, it's not going to call the tool when you pass back response. Rather, it's going to send this as the tool call message. And so here we can see that I'm passing in error, user interrupted with feedback, sign it from Harrison. So basically what this is going to do is this is going to tell the LLM that there was an error calling the tool and that the user interrupted and it wants it to be signed as Harrison. And this is all enabled by human in the loop. So let's run this. And so we can see that now this post model hook runs. This post model hook adds a message. So it adds this message and it adds a tool call with the same tool call ID as before with the content error, user interrupted with feedback. It now goes to the agent node. So it doesn't go to the tool node because there's no dangling tool calls because we mocked out that tool call response. So now we go back to this agent node and we can see that it, it, it regenerates a call to an LLM and now it signs it as Harrison here. And then it interrupts again because it goes back to this human in the loop config. There's now this new email that needs to be sent and now I can accept it. And when I accept it, we can see that it now sends this email and again, it signs at Harrison, and then it continues from. Let's take a look at how this last one looked in Langsmith, because it will be pretty illustrative in terms of what happens in terms of threads, in particular with these responses. So you'll notice here that this is the run page. I can see all the runs I have here. But there's also this threads page. So this now tracks things as they occurred with this thread ID. So if I click here on this latest thread, I can see the interaction that I just had. So first I messaged the agent, tell jim at gmail.com, I'll be late. The AI generated this message and it called this tool. In turn two, I had this input, which passed this argument, error, user interrupted with feedback, sign it from Harrison. I now pass in this tool call here, error, user interrupted with feedback. This is represented as a tool call, and I get back this other AI call. And then in turn three, 
it's this accept response. And then I get this message here as well, and it goes through all the way. And so if we look here, and we look at the final call that was made in this sequence, I can see the full sequence of messages as it appears to the LLM. There's the system message. So this is the system message of the deep agent, the first human message, the AI message generating a tool call, the tool call itself. But the tool call itself is now my human interrupt, error, user interrupted with feedback. If the one goes back, another AI message, calls the send email tool again. Now we get the real response from the tool that's sent. And then this is the final response from the agent. Hopefully that shows you how to use human in the loop in deep agents. If you need more info, there's documentation in the readme. Try it out. Let me know what you think.